Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. <clears throat> On Wednesday, March 16th, yes, today was the exciting Fed Day. Hope everybody had a blast with that one. A uh, couple of years later, we finally get a quarter point interest rate hike. Very exciting news there. Um, although we'll dig into that and more because a lot happening. Some unusual reactions, uh, you know, typically when interest rates go up, that means a lot of things that aren't ideal for stock prices. Um, yet the NASDAQ on fire today, goodness, up 3.77% amidst a lot of other things, although uh, Berkshire Hathaway closing at 500,000 a share. There's Jerome, uh, whether he placed his trades before the announcement, we don't know exactly yet, but either either case, nice to be back with you here tonight. My eye is doing much better. So, um, yeah, and more so, it's just been a lot of uh, moving and uh, somewhat hectic life conditions, but it's nice to be back on screen and hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, and <clears throat> we will dig into a lot of the stories that have been going on, um, including that so many Russians are buying gold that central bank has halted purchases. This, uh, I believe, came out yesterday, and we can dig in. It was not actually just a zero hedge story. Uh, I know some people don't like zero hedge or don't feel it's accurate. I kind of feel the same way about Reuters and CNBC, but, you know, that's why... You know, I'm just saying people are saying this stuff. I share my comment, try and phrase that as opinion. And it appears, though, that people are reporting that the central bank is halting purchases. Um, certainly makes uh, enough sense. And let's uh, dig in here. The Russian central bank said it will suspend the buying of gold from banks from Tuesday to meet increased demand for the precious metals from households. It's latest attempt to weather the storm on Russian markets. So currently households demand for buying physical gold in bars has increased, driven in particular by the abolition of value added tax on these operations. Also to the degree uh, with the chaos that's going on there. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, I would buy gold or silver, but again, that's just me here. Their central bank raised the, Key rate to 20% from 9.5% on February 28th and uh, is meeting again next Friday. So banks said it would suspend its gold purchases from banks from March 15th. Uh, but I think specifically what they mean is that it's gold purchases from banks. I'm not sure if they're... <laughs> I think they're not letting the retail banks sell to the customers as much as how i read it before a little confusing there but sanctions have cut off key parts of the global financial markets triggering worse economic crisis and we will see how that one plays out but let's go back up here said it will suspend the buying of gold from banks from tuesday to meet increased demand for precious metals from household well um, in the end, I think there's a lot of reasons to be buying gold as opposed to holding a lot of other things. Although I'll admit, you know, I was feeling all proud of myself Friday night. I mean, it's again, not ideal. The conditions that are happening in the world, but as I saw those, uh, you know, the military escalation on Saturday and, you know, think about what's happening with the currencies and, I was starting to feel like, well, I'm, I'm kind of glad I have this position on and then, no, maybe I was expecting more than was reasonable Sunday and just seeing how it continues to get pounded in the face of a lot of people buying physical silver, which is why I read the thing from Bullion Star on Monday and was not planning to talk with Andy, but, you know, just to show. And I know some people don't want to hear just from Andy. That's why I put the other one on. And I think conditions have been like that in many places. So. Yet so far not reflected in the COMEX price, which we can take a quick look at today. Interesting chart pattern here. Um, look at that. So, you know, theoretically, you know, if the Fed's raising interest rates, ideally, I mean, that's how 
part of how the legend of Volker came in in 1980 and saved the day. Perhaps we'll dig more into Paul another day. Wonder what he did in 2011 with Obama. You know, who knows about that? Uh, but like I said, maybe a lot of people do, or some do, or we could do a little research, connect a few dots, and that might be fun. But back to our chart here, you know, theoretically, you would think, all right, you know, if they're raising interest rates, kind of would make sense, at least on a mathematical basis, the stocks and uh, precious metals would go down yet. Stocks just restoring all day. And then you have this. I don't know if that's a scoop and handle or what would be. It looks like a big dipper almost, but I would say it's what Mark Chilton referred to as the old spoofaroo, where there you get some people stopped out by hammering the bids, as was pretty eloquently described by John Edmonds, Christian Troons, uh, and a whole bunch of others in those confessions from JP Morgan that led them to get fined $920 million. Um, although here, jerking it up and then lower as Andrew McGuire described in his public emails to CFTC back in 2009. <laughs> I heard his case is still ongoing. Maybe Ross is presiding over that one too. But then that being kind of counterintuitive, interest rates higher, theoretically going to unprint or print less. Yet by the end of the day, silver had rallied. So my best guess on that one is I'm, I'm feeling better about my theorem or postulate that expecting these markets to move, you know, it's like a company has expecting a dollar earnings and they're like, get $3 earnings. You would think on earnings, it would go up, but maybe it'll go down. So people get stopped out. And then two days later, it'll be a lot higher. Um, these are the things I think about and what I found in my experience uh, from the trading floor and beyond. Um, as well as talking with Bart, you know, and studying these things, you know, here you see, I mean, I, you know, there's some volatility in these things, but the whole point is that it's measuring the demand of silver and people are buying a lot of silver and things are tightening up. Um, you know, I think there's a flaw there, although I did call the uh, CME today with some, delivery questions and uh, we'll get to that but russia stokes fear of first foreign currency default in more than a century as it attempts payment possibility or impossibility of filling our obligations foreign currency does not depend on us uh, claim they had the necessary funds to fill its obligations however um they uh i guess it's down here a little bit they didn't know which to pay them in <laughs> And they said the ball's in their court. Russian Federation has the necessary money in foreign accounts. It is possible to pay in ruble settlements. But Joe Biden has made that a little bit tricky. Although I know Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan are still in there doing business. So all these other places, you know, that boycotted Russia after the full investigation where President Biden took this to Congress, presented all the evidence. Um, explained the bio lab facilities that are apparently creating some toxic shit um, that appear to be in Ukraine that even Victoria Newland of the State Department confirmed. Um, so basically, obviously, this sanctions came after all this was due process was done. Uh, and uh, <laughs> either case, uh, no, of course, none of that happened in case anyone's wondering. He's kidding. Um, one of the measures was to sanction, was to effectively freeze the central bank, their stockpile. So they did everything possible to shut them off. Corporate world shuns Russia. Yes, everybody, even Facebook went as far as to say uh, who you could, if it's a Russian person, you can talk about your plans of who you think would be a hero for assassinating that person. So um, now normally that falls under their hate speech uh, policy but they made an exception without any of that due process or explanation of what bio labs are doing in Ukraine. I mean, because that would seem to be relevant in the story, but um, either case, you know, now we're waiting to see if they are going to make a bond payment and then Russia fails to pay scheduled interest on dollar bonds by close of business. 
have not received confirmation. Uh, we will not dig through this. We have the money. We made the payment. Now the ball is on the side, first of all, of the American authorities. Well, here's the problem. The American authorities haven't been trustworthy for a long time. Their history of foreign intervention isn't so trustworthy. They intervene in a lot of places. And I personally don't trust these guys. And, and through all the midst of this, though, look at look at the stock market soaring. We have Moderna up 14%. Look at it, Jess. And it, I mean, it took off all day. And then like a rocket after interest rates go up. So impervious. Now, you might say, well, maybe they're making vaccines. And despite the fact that a lot of, I mean, even President Obama announced these triple vaccines, yet still got COVID. And despite that, many people have died after getting the vaccines. Um, he, and him having it after being triple vaxxed, he's still recommending that people get it, although they're saying it's now safe to take off the masks. So a virologist, or no, a virologist, I am not, but those are some of the questions I have yet. It seems like those inter that that 25 basis point interest rate hike was not able to dent into Bumble's future earnings or Snapchat or win casinos. So American Airlines up 5.78%. Carnival Cruise Lines. Look at Macy's go. I hope none of the shoppers also use gasoline. Wow. Look at JP Morgan up four and a half percent, which means I got absolutely tatered on my JP Morgan puts. Um, wow, and I was early on that attempt to pop the uh, watch the stock market bubble pop. I would not have guessed that you'd have such a rally like this, but hey, maybe tomorrow will be my day. So, moving on, a quick note from Raina Gold. Now, you might be thinking, well, I thought Raina was a silver company. And don't worry, folks. Don't worry. I know, uh, especially for some of the diehard silver fans out there, you know, like, and especially a lot of interest in Raina. Um, I did buy shares of Raina Silver the other day. So, just to be forthright, and Raina is a sponsor. So, keep that in mind. Although now Raina Gold is a separate company, as you can see there, district scale gold exploration in northwestern Mexico. And I've been talking to mi amigo Jorge Ramiro Monroy, who I believe is in Mexico at the moment. Uh, I know he's a busy man because now he has two companies going and he's planning to come on and talk about Raina Gold soon as well as what he's seeing in the markets uh he lives in hong kong and also does his thing in mexico with the great dr peter mcgaw so we'll look forward to checking in with him soon and uh, but you can find more information at reinagold.com or of course for these silver fans who are like i don't want to hear about this gold stuff you can go to reinasilver.com it's it's cool so anyway there you go on that one now, here we have some news about this London nickel situation, which I discussed with the fellow from the CME when I was asking about certain things in the delivery ports. I don't think he appreciated some of my questions, or maybe I get, I try to go into these staying like calm and collected. Sometimes I get frustrated and, you know, I mean, uh, although I, I, I think I mostly behave myself today and, you know, we've decided to disagree on certain ways of handling uh, risks to the system, but that's okay. I uh, appreciate he was kind enough to give me some information, which we'll get to. But here we have nickel trading blows up again. This is of Rafi Farber, the wise of the Endgame Investor fame uh, and Rafi's weekly silver Endgame Investor Silver Report on the Arcadia Silver Network, which I might add is expanding coverage, and you'll be finding out more about that soon as well as a new uh, <laughs> expose your favorite government agency league with prizes on the line. So stay tuned for information on that. But back to the important stuff like nickel, the future of the LME appears in doubt, writes Rafi. They put in price limits to keep from another blowout. Instead, they got a collapse. LME suspended electronic trading. Now they were supposed to reopen today, which they did, but they suspended trading just moments <laughs> after the world's main market for metal reopened. Fresh trading halt came after the price of nickel tumbled when it reopened. 
Newly installed curbs to support the resumption were meant to prevent the price from declining by more than 5%, but some trades appeared to have breached the limit. Everyone knew the contract would be that limit down immediately, says Colin Hamilton. You would have thought the LME and providers would have run a few tests for that scenario. Uh, the limit was too small. What could be happening? Okay, well, before we get to Rafi's comment there, I would just like to point out, <clears throat> you know, they said on Monday that, you know, they shut it down because they felt the market had, uh, in their, in the LME's opinion, not been maintaining accurate reflection of the price, which we'll leave aside whether you disagree with that or not, but the statement in itself if it means that the LME is deciding whether the price is right or not. So it's like, I mean, maybe they are, maybe they do know when it's right, but on some level they're playing God in the pricing. <clears throat> Continue on here and uh, here again, they set limits. Apparently the, where, the, where they were marking it or where the limit was, wasn't right either. Cause the thing blew through it. I don't know if you could not write or what do you want to call it, but I mean, they had to shut it down again. So it doesn't seem like it went well. Kind of reminds me of this book I'm reading about the Hunt Brothers trial, where they, they talk about these economists that, that come in, came in and gave their estimates of, you know, did the hunts manipulate the market? Was it impactful? Where would the price have gone? He's, you know, they're all coming up with different answers. They're all claiming to be experts. And here I can prove that their estimates are, are not valid or cannot withstand proof because if these guys knew exactly all these market dynamics can phrase it perfectly, should be good. They should be going and trading that fact, you know, to, but that's the difference with uh, guys like Powell and economists. <clears throat> well, I actually, I'm glad I've been uh, option trading more actively, um, which I think will add further insight to the audience's benefit, hopefully. So, but I mean, if it's like, you're just, uh, you know, it's great. Like, well, we've gone here. Well, if you're that smart, then you should be able to trade it profitably. And, you know, I don't think Ross can do that unless, you know, he's tamping, unless he gets his trade off before he tamps it down. And there is Venom news today, so stay tuned. What could be happening is that commercial traders on the LME who actually need nickel aren't trusting the LME to supply the physical when needed and so are not balancing out the speculators that are just shuffling paper and the price is going wacky in every direction but is more stable in Shanghai. Uh, this same thing will happen in gold and silver. Price discovery should be destroyed on the COMEX in London at some point. But in the case of the monetary metals, I don't think any other exchange can take its place as currencies will be collapsing at that point. It seems like the Russian currency is already running into some issue. Um, instead, people will have to exchange gold and silver for goods and services directly. Paper markets be damned. <clears throat> Dollar ain't nickel backed, yo. This is gold and silver backed. Well, actually, it's not. I think we'd be better off if it were. Um, although I don't know if I've ever felt necessarily that, you know, I needed gold or silver to be used as money for the idea of owning it to make sense. But <clears throat> anyway, so there you go. Note from Rafi. But we will continue on because we're still... <laughs> I mean, just here you go. Energy traders ask for central bank bailouts to save them from margin call. So things are blowing up. And sure enough, now, you know, you saw what JP Morgan was doing yesterday. If At least if you're watching yesterday's show where I talked about it or doing your own research. Um, but what was there is uh, one of those volatility indexes, I think, run by Barclays is blowing up. JP Morgan is negotiating uh, the nickel market deal, and they're also on one side of it. And we don't really know who's on the other side, but uh, we have Trafficker, or we have a sense after Trafficker, we have a sense of which commodity merchant will be next to be hit with a multi billion dollar call. Um, and in an annual report published Monday, Glencore highlighted the ability to finance margin payments. So Oh, look at this. That said, speaking at the conference, I didn't see this before. Rusty, <laughs> Rusty, the regulator, chair of the CFTC, top U.S. derivatives regulator. What did he do here today? Said appropriate margins must be unfailingly be unfailingly be maintained. We must hold fast to our regulatory structures, which allows him to price cap whenever he feels like it, and only telling the bankers 
And would you believe we're in the anniversary of the Boca Raton Futures Conference? I can't believe I missed it. What does he say here? We must hold fast to our regulatory structures like the MRAC to the CCP, which he mentions again down here. He loves the Chinese Communist Party, I think. I'm not sure if that's what he's referring to. But hold fast to those structures and resist the urge to make ad hoc decisions to avoid the natural outcome of market forces. Oh, and resist the urge to make ad hoc decisions to avoid the natural outcomes. I thought he was actually admitting that he wants to avoid the natural outcomes of market forces. Um, <clears throat> there you go. <clears throat> Ross hard at work and another market blowing up. So I'll uh, take a closer look at that one later. Tesla increases vehicle prices for second time in weeks amid commodity shock. I'm not sure if uh, Joe Biden would uh, say that's also Putin's fault. But one thing I'm curious about now, I don't know if Tesla still use palladium in their catalytic converters, but I think I saw, don't quote me on this one, Chet, look it up for yourself. I think it was about 50% of palladium comes from Russia, which uh, I guess if nobody's allowed to trade with them except for J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, unless they start like a, an Enron of palladium, which they might do, you know, Jeff. But aside from that, you know, we'll see how that one shakes out. <laughs> Trending, Zelensky, president of the United States. Why don't we just make Zelensky the president of the United States when Joe's done? I hear they know each other. I hear Hunter knows both of them and they're all, I don't know for sure, but what I do know is that I called the CME today to try and understand this fine document here. Cause this is the delivery port in silver and uh, it opens up an Excel spreadsheet. So you could double check it for yourself, but I looked it up the delivery limit per month. And I also called my man Thomas over at the CME uh, and, uh, you know, was able to confirm that there is a limit. So you're only supposed to take up to 3000 contracts. This was like, I guess, probably the etymology of this was likely from the Hunt brothers uh, and their saga. But, you know, with the idea of not having market corners like J.P. Morgan, that Bart Chilton even confirmed. Um Anyway, you see here, the limit's 3,000. There's Bank of America issuing, delivering almost 5,000 contracts, which is 25 million ounces of silver. Now, a lot of people, uh, and one of the, another, I'll leave that aside, but um, some people point out, well, it's different. Here's the customer account, and this is the house account, but this is their house account. So that means they had to come up with 25 million ounces of silver which would in, in theory imply they were short. I know there's the Ted Butler writes and, and Bix talk about that. You know, I see the numbers here. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard. Only Ross, only Ross has the details and Bofa might be part of his CCP MRAC, you know, boiler shop. So, all I know is that it's over the limit. And also you can see now here's JP Morgan, the customer account. Now, I mean, that's well over the limit. They were saying, well, it could be for multiple customers and, you know, maybe they could be creating shell entities. Um, <laughs> you know, they learned, they, is it fair for me to say that? Is that fair? I mean, I don't want to slander someone, but they did. They were the sole banker for, for Bernie Madoff. So even if they weren't doing that with Bernie Madoff after they got in trouble for uh, not alerting any of their customers, even though they pulled out their own money right before it collapsed, you know, surely in the due diligence, since they were on a deferred prosecution agreement, just like they were still on a deferred prosecution agreement when they got fined by Ross for evading regulators last year, they were still on the deferred prosecution agreement from when they got caught manipulating gold and silver on hundreds of thousands of occasions. And I think they uh, their deferred prosecution agreement from Bernie Madoff, I think their next crime was, well, that was still going. So a lot happening in today's markets, as you can see. 
And of course, 6,500 there, 3,800, 4,400. I mean, not only, well, you, another way of looking at it is not only do they have active trading for themselves, because here's the house account, just so that's over 3,000 right there. So, but I mean, they're handling most of the order flow. So, I mean, they're, you know, they're a prop desk, they're order flow, they're government funded. They have a felony track record. In fact, they're so desperate for workers in this inflationary environment. It was reported they're even opening up their their qualifications to hire ex-felons. I wonder if Elizabeth Warren's going to comment on that soon or investigate that. Again, uh, if anyone can send, uh, call her office, send uh, the, the evidence page on the arcadeeconomics.com website. That's the kind of thing that will be in the showdown league because there's going to be silver prizes. You might be, and you guys really want a silver chopper, Ben, somebody start making some phone calls, getting some people on the record. Okay. Elizabeth Warren, who's always talking tough about Jamie Dimon. All right. An investigation should be done here. I mean, I've identified throughout the whole channel, a lot of things that are worthy of further examination. You know, I think there's certainly crimes documented just with what I've been able to see. And certainly if someone has subpoena power or cares to look behind the records or ask Ross. Would be nice. So Elizabeth Warren, but we'll have prizes to contact all these guys. So it's coming. But here you see numbers over the limit. So I called the CME and they said basically the same thing they said last year that. Well, these guys could have an exemption. I said, okay, well, do we know if somebody's checked to make sure that Bank of America had some exemption that allowed their house account to be short five, five, 25, 25 million ounces of silver? He said, well, they can't say that. That's not public, but the CFTC's on it. Well, you know what else the CFTC is on? Let's hear it. Let's hear it from Ross. And in many respects, um, the resiliency and the market structure of uh, the futures market really were able to tamp down um, what could have been a much worse situation in the silver market. So that's where Ross at last year's Boca Raton Futures Conference. And he was back there again. You're not, I, I got to see this now. <laughs> Just this morning, March 16th, keynote of Chairman Rusty the Boss at the Boca International Futures Conference in Boca Raton. So I can't believe I wasn't invited. I mean, that's just shocking. Right? But anyway, if you're wondering if uh, there's any <clears throat> anyone checking if this was actually an exemption or if a crime was committed. See, so like there were those crimes committed. Now the JP Morgan guys are on trial and it seems like there's a lot of crime, but no one in the public knows how it's impacting the market. I mean, maybe the government regulators know, but it's like, would be helpful, but you don't know this. So I'm saying, is this a crime or is there an exemption? And okay, let's say the CFTC gave Bank of America I'm pretty sure was one of the ones that needed to be bailed out with taxpayer money. Let's say they actually did give them an exemption. What would that what like? What would, what would the need be for them to be short 25 million ounces of silver? When Ross still refuses to answer any of these questions about when else the market could be tamped down. Well, we know damn well when the market's getting tamped down <clears throat> and in things that, um, well, at the moment I'm not at the, I mean, I don't know if it'd be proof, but, we know who's tamping the thing down and wh where the money's coming from. It's Ross and other people like Janet Yellen. I mean, you can see the price. <laughs> you can also hear things out there and ascertain and put a few facts together. And, you know, won't dig into the details of that today, limited in what I can say. But, you know, when you see the stock market up today, that's the Exchange Stabilization Fund, the Plunge Working Group on Capital Markets. These are not fictional concepts or government recognized things. I think we have a quote in uh, one of these links from it. So, <clears throat> but what, what could be the exemption? So I find on their site, here are the possible exemptions, bonafide hedging transaction or position. 
what what are they hedging? The hedging in their house account. What are they? What, what are they hedging? SLV shares. <laughs> they don't. They don't, what, they don't have like a, a silver mill in there. <laughs> Spread transaction or financial distress problems. So either Bank of America has a hedge exemption for one of these three reasons. Or they've violated the law, or at least, you know, I mean, the guy wouldn't disagree with me. I'm saying it does limit 3,000. He says, yes. Well, I'm like, 49.49 is bigger than 3,000. Well, they either, they might have an exemption. No one knows what it's for. If anyone, we'll make that a prize. If anyone can find out, call the CFTC 202 418 5000. And if you can get some sort of record of what, what they had to have a hedge exemption for, it, the five ounce silver prize on that. By the way, uh, good news. The silver cubes, uh, I believe, are in the mail or going in the mail this week. Um, a lot of them being sent out. So anyway, um, we shall move on. That's uh, that's that. And here's Rusty at the Futures Conference. I wish there was video of it. But there was a statement. How exciting. Let's dig in here. From Ross, himself, the man himself. For CFTC regulated markets, surveillance staff are surgically <laughs> focused on their... They're not just focused on their analysis. They, they're wearing fucking rubber gloves with syringes. That's how Ross plays. That's how he does it. You know, you don't just become like emperor of the financial world. I mean, he's taken over cryptos now too. Oh, in fact, uh, <laughs> I think, let me see if I can find that. Oh, that is a great one. Uh, let's see. In a momento, because I've been meaning to share. Ross has, has basically, he wants to expand his, his powers <laughs> to be the crypto czar too. Uh, let's see if we can find that one. Wow, I'm like regaining the live skills uh, on the fly here. So, um, yes, I believe that is it. Yes, uh, Ross, I mean, you know, he's done such a great job in uh, silver that he's going to take over crypto. So I did find it and uh, we'll put that up, but let's. Let's finish reading through the surgically focused precision of analysis of trading for any manipulative, inappropriate, or disruptive conduct. Mission staff are actively monitoring compliance by exchanges, self-regulatory organizations, and intermediaries for trade processing, execution, and clearing. Now, they didn't say anything about the evidence I submitted, but you know, where Jeff Curry created a materially impactful statement last year during silver squeeze, but where those obligations also include responsibility to maintain appropriate margin, customer segregation and capitalization compliance must unfailingly be maintained. Indeed, we must hold fast to our regulatory structures and resist the urge to make ad hoc decisions to avoid the natural outcomes of market forces. I wonder if that means how last year, how people were buying a lot of silver, the price was going up and then he tamped it down while only telling the banks that he finds and um oh yeah i did also ask that uh the guy for the cme was saying well how would they know if jp morgan was in compliance because jp morgan was saying stuff that they were avoiding the regulators so the cftc you know really to say that you know they're maintaining any of this you know jp morgan got caught and paid the 920 million and then they were they were caught avoiding it again so can we at least acknowledge that you know what ross is doing it's like <laughs> change your shit man it's not working but at ross's direction cftc staff are using every tool <laughs> they're using every tool out there the agency has to ensure the commodity markets continue to fairly and transparently serve the intended price discovery and risk management function. Um, okay. When markets function properly, basically in whatever direction the U.S. government wants, 
American consumers can have the confidence that, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe he said it. Oh my God. Oh my God, he did it. Oops, Russ did it again. He actually says when markets function properly, American consumers can have the confidence they are not paying a penny extra at the pump in their homes or the grocery store. Wow. 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 People are buying silver because they've seen the value of their dollar get destroyed. Now, it's getting rapidly further destroyed. There's more printing. The, the government stole another tr- one and a half trillion last week. It's going to be printed. And he's reading bullet points from Joe Biden. But let's see why they want more Ross <laughs> because. CFTC chair asked Congress for authority to regulate some cryptocurrencies. Look at Il Capo. Wow, look, he's such a badass. Oh, my God. So he actually put his right hand up. Had his tie crooked, but swore an oath and said he wants to regulate cryptos. Well, actually would fit in. You know, they like rigging cryptos as the uh, other guy, Giancarlo. Um, said here, it's not even meaning to share this just because it was so stunning. I don't even want to read any more about this. This guy, regulators in the Biden administration, but like, and there's a lot of people are pissed at him, whatever he's doing with the swaps. And look at this guy's uh Twitter feed, it's Unfortunate Senate Agricultural Committee, which along with its counterpart in the House, oversees the CFTC. So there's someone you can contact if anyone's at home. I called them uh, two weeks ago. It didn't go so well. Um, begun considering the possibility of granting the agency that authority through legislation. So soon Ross can run. Ross Ross could maybe like tell the LME what price to open nickel at tomorrow. You can tell the Bitcoin owners he's pegging it at 35000 That's the price. Ross can just... We could get Ross to just set the price for every market. How much it can go up, how much it can go down. And at the same time, they can uh, tell entrepreneurs to come to the U.S. because it's the land of the free. Well, you see wars going on. You see supply chains being just devastated. So now there's going to be food. I don't know. I mean, I think there's going to be issues with the things that are happening, but Ross is going to play financial God. So there you go. And tamp down the price, no matter how much silver people buy. And despite whether people like Keith Newmeyer, who I think have the qualifications to say if there's an issue. But, you know, on a right, right, minor unrelated side note, Janet Yellen's Flood Protection Team has $142 billion to play with. Oh, so Silver Boy wasn't just, you know, making up another conspiracy theory. Hmm. Most Americans are unaware of the existence of the Exchange Stabilization Fund, although together with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, it has morphed into the U.S. Treasury Secretary's Plunge Protection Team. So when Ross says, you know, he was worried the silver price getting out of control. It could have been a much worse situation. They use taxpayer or printed money. To just decide what they want the price to be. So they don't want the stock market to collapse so they can keep power. Well, they make it go higher. Interest rates go up. Hey, damn it. Make it higher anyway. So. Nugent was able to give himself this massive slush fund by helping to rate the 2020 stimulus bills known as CARES Act, which handed him $500 billion. Wow, well, that's a nice little chunk. I'm not going to go through the details of all of this one today, um, but this stuff is happening out there. It's known throughout Wall Street, and that's how you get exclusive Goldman Sachs bonus pool for investment bankers up 40 to 50 percent. And what's this? What's Joe saying here? Well, message What's in here that we will defend every inch of nato territory every we pride this support to ukraine we're going to continue to stand together with our allies in europe and
unmistakable message that we will defend every inch of NATO territory, every single inch, with a united, galvanized NATO. One movement. That's why I've moved over 12,000 American forces along the borders with Russia, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Romania, etc. Now we're sending move troops. Once. Granted, if we respond, it is World War III, but we have a sacred obligation on NATO territory, a sacred obligation, Article 5. And we will not, although we will not. Now, sacred obligation on NATO territory. Fight the Third World War in Ukraine. Putin's war against Ukraine was never be a victory. Democrats are rising to meet the moment, relying, r- rallying the world on the side of peace and security. We're showing the strength and we'll never falter. But look, the idea, the idea that we're going to send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews, just understand and uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say. That's called World War Three. Para llevar a cabo tus proyectos necesitas. I had not heard. <laughs> Sorry, I need, need a moment here. I had not heard that one, but it just popped up there. News breaking fast. What What do you say to that? And this is the man, Judd. Uh, What's his face? Uh, Benham serves. How does that make you feel if you're an American? It didn't make me feel safe. Because, you know, and again, uh, if someone's just tuning in now, I mean, at the heart of it, though, is that what really happened? You know, and here's Ukrainian President Zelensky, who's invoking Pearl Harbor references, September 11th, both of which Pearl Harbor look up general mccullum's uh actually we can uh let's see we'll do it right uh, type a new one here general mccullum pearl harbor so eight or nine point plan um basically oh yeah the smoking gun of colonel of uh, pearl harbor Lieutenant commander arthur mccullum of the office of naval intelligence submitted ooh, naval intelligence those are the same guys that would have invested that were investigating the bush gang that had a lot of ties to september 11th so interesting references from zelly uh, but mccullum submitted a memo detailed an eight-step plan to provoke Japan into attacking the United States. President Roosevelt, over the course of 1941, implemented all eight of the recommendations contained in the McCullough Memo. Following the eighth provocation, Japan attacked. The public was told that it was a complete surprise, an intelligence failure, and America entered World War II. So that sure seems to be what's building here. And now Joe Biden, for the first time, that was the same thing he did a couple of months ago when he was like, just like bringing the term nuclear into a conversation unnecessarily, which I think that should be an impeachable offense, let alone here. He's like threatening world war three. And for at the heart of it, the story is that Russia is just going in, beating up the little Ukrainians. But the other side of the story is that the Ukrainian president Zelensky has some connections with Hunter Biden uh, and a lot of, and, and there turns out there are bio labs there right near Russia. Why aren't they allowed to defend themselves? But the U S can do Pearl Harbor September 11th, where I was considered collateral damage. Why were the Bush family meeting with the bin Laden's their business partners, even that morning? Why was that never brought up? And here Zelensky is now asking for help from Biden invoking the attack on Pearl Harbor and Zelensky, I find that absolutely offensive. I'll say it as someone who was impacted by September 11th, uh, because here, uh, fortunately let, let's, let's go to the videotape here. I mean, in fact, perhaps the uh, weirdest part was the intro with the thing. The following content has been identified by YouTube as inappropriate. Oh, it was, uh, <laughs> Zelensky got taken down for being inappropriate. Oh my God. Or maybe it was the, uh, 
Maybe it was the Nancy Pelosi part. It was pretty tough to watch, but um, just before we get to this one, I'm going to make sure that the sand is coming through. Let's look at, I guess this would be a good example. This one might be a little shocking uh, because at the heart of it, I guess I've been struggling maybe to put this uh, into concise words, so bear with me here, but it sure seems like Zelensky is involved with a cast of nefarious characters. I've seen videos of people running around with uh, swastika flags and doing stuff that, you know, doesn't look good. And anyway, we'll see one example of that. So rather than me uh, saying that, hopefully, uh, let me know if you can hear the sound on this. Я знаю, що е, як журналіст я маю бути об'єктивним, маю е, бути виваженим для того, щоб повідомляти вам інформацію з холодним серцем, але на правду триматися зараз дуже важко, особливо в такий час. І якраз уже нас на Росії називають е, нацистами, фашистами і так за, за, за цитувати слова. Адольфа Ейхмана, який сказав, що для того, щоб знищити націю, потрібно нищити в першу чергу дітей. Тому що вбиваючи їхніх батьків, діти виростуть і обов'язково помстяться. Вбиваючи дітей, вони ніколи не виростуть і нація зникне. Як Збройні сили України не можуть нищити російських дітей, тому що це заборонено правилами війни. І це заборонено різними конвенціями, в тому числі Женевськими. Але я не зі Збройних сил України. І коли мені випаде нагода розправитися з росіянами, я обов'язково це зроблю. Я дотримуюсь, раз ви вже називаєте нацистами, дотримуюсь доктрини Адольфа Ейхмана і зроблю все, що від мене залежить для того, щоб ні ви, ні ваші діти ніколи не жили на цій землі. Для того, щоб ви відчули, як воно, коли... So, we'll stop there. I think you get the idea. Now, I don't know who this guy is, whether this translation is accurate, but there are a lot of people who are suggesting that these are basically where Biden's dropping off the missiles to. And that the bio labs are because people like this guy and Zelensky are running Nazi training facilities. And the report the other day was that Putin blew up uh, uh, a facility that was where U.S. had been doing training regiments. So if this is accurate and this is what's going on with Hunter and uh, we'll, we'll come to that. Here's, okay, we see, you won't see this on your TV set. Every coin has two sides. So let us take a look at this one. Again, by all means, I'm trying to share what, my thoughts and what I, and be clear of what you know it's like i don't know what it's fact these days but it just seems a lot different from what the biden and u.s government regimes say Тем более мы не воюем против первой жизни. Подходите сюда, подходите. Не переживайте, все нормально. Не переживайте. Все хорошо, здравствуйте. Меня зовут Даниил. Я полковник российской армии. Все нормально. Мы сюда пришли по поручению президента Российской Федерации для того, чтобы освободить народ Украины. От фашистов, нацистов и тех бандитов, которые сидят у власти. Мы, наоборот, пришли для того, чтобы здесь было чисто и спокойно. Мы не трогаем, мы не трогаем мир, не трогаем тем более детей и всех остальных. В той стране уже зачищено, там чисто. Там наши. Вы можете спокойно сейчас туда выехать, и вы окажетесь в свободном периметре. Понятно? Поэтому мы сейчас вас проводим, вы выйдете. Через пару дней, в ближайшее время, здесь мы организуем гуманитарную помощь. Глава Чеченской Республики Рамзан Павлович Кадыров уже отправляет сюда машины со всем необходимым. В первую очередь для детей. Лекарства, памперсы, теплая одежда, продукты питания. So, there you go. Again, uh... I'm, I'm not trying to take sides. I think the whole thing is unfortunate, but just that you see other countries uh, involved. U.S. administration continues to appear involved in not ideal ways, and uh, perhaps we will leave that one for there. Um, 
here is Yara, the silver babe, saying, uh, I have questions. Uh, and she, in response to me, still trying to figure out how a country $30.3 trillion in debt, U.S., can send $13.6 billion in aid to Ukraine while giving congressional staff a 21% raise in the same week. And this $13.6 billion in aid, where did it go to? I believe a lot of this was weapons. Is Joe Biden a, a, an arms dealer now? Is he a gun runner? That concerns me. I mean, you see the man talk. I don't... <laughs> Let's see what he, a little bit of what he had to say. Hopefully, we won't catch the part with Nancy. It was it was disturbing. <laughs> Called on U.S. Congress to help fight, do more to fight Russia. A rousing applause. I hear the Russians have been going after him and his friends, which are the friends of these guys, not the Russian people. Remember Pearl Harbor. Terrible morning of December 7, 1941, when your sky was black from the planes attacking. And uh, either General McCollum's memo is incorrect, although the great judge, Dr. No, I guess it was just known as Judge John Denson. Great interviews on Lou Rockwell podcast. That was where I heard about General McCollum's eight-point plan. And here he's referencing two false flag terrorist events where the U.S. government, at minimum, had heavy ties. You know, similar how Bush and Bin Laden's business partners. There's a similar dynamic, Clinton's, the Bidens, and this guy who was a former actor and comedian. So not not maybe the best reference data point to invoke, you but just remember it. Remember September the 11th, a terrible day in 20, 2001, when evil tried to turn your cities, independent territories in battlefields, when innocent people were attacked right now at this moment, every night for three weeks now various ukrainian cities odessa and kharkiv chernihiv and sumy zhitomir and lviv mariupol and dnipro right well there you go um <laughs> send on over the missiles um here's a site called the new economy.gr talks about the unknown relation of president Zelensky, hunter biden and ukraine kleptocrats in the neo-nazi azov battalion uh study of Burisma holdings done in Ukraine. Uh co-funded by American billionaire George Soros found that the true owner of Burisma was none of the Ukraine. We won't go through the details of this, but in other words, the real person was the benefactor and boss of Vice President Hunter Biden. And uh apparently he knew Zelensky and the CIA is involved, which is always a trustworthy organization with a great track record of doing good uh, so you know i'm Zelensky's oligarch connection i'm just saying that they're making it seem like russia is just like the evil boogeyman and they're threatening world war three and uh, i'm not sure that they have evidence to justify what they're doing and uh, the toxic money trail that leads to Zelensky, Mafia Godfather, Kolomoisky, and Hunter Biden. Um, yep. Where he ran for presidency, Vladimir Zelensky was a comedian. He hears a video from eight years ago that was wiped off YouTube. I saw one of his like music videos, which was a bit. I mean, hey, I have music videos too, but I'm not asking for missiles. So. <laughs> um... There is a couple interesting. Uh, oh, yeah. In July 2019, Zelensky tweeted a picture of himself with Justin Trudeau and credited the, the Canadian prime minister for inspiring him to get into politics. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the name I'd want to be dropping. Uh, here's that neo-Nazi Azov battalion again. I'm not familiar with their work. So I'm just saying that, I don't know, this guy could have just put up a website and making these things up. Although it kind of seems like uh, 
here is harp and weather warfare that does exist you know monsanto i mean these a lot of guys that get caught so it seems like this guy you know knows a few things uh but i just did a, a google search Zelensky, hunter biden russia and ukraine but don't worry because in the end anthony blinken is planning a trip to saudi arabia arabia amid ukraine's induced scramble for more oil i believe last week uh Saudi Arabia was telling the Biden administration to go stick it and making deals to send oil to China. Uh, so and Anthony Blinken reminds me, I'm not sure if you've seen his fine work before. He reminds me quite a bit of uh, Benjamin from Wayne's world and Benjamin is nobody's friend. So he's going to go smooth things up in the middle East. Uh, again, remember there were missiles flying from uh, apparently Iran says they sent them into Iraq near Israel and the U.S. is shit. So, you know, <laughs> but we'll send Benjamin on in to check that one out. Um, and uh, one last story. How much is that big gold cube worth? This was pretty cool. If you look down here. Someone has made a massive gold cube it actually looks like the arcadia silver cube a little bit perhaps a little bigger um uh, where did they say how many ounces that but that, isn't that nice guess we'll have to make the 100 ounce arcadia cube and just keep getting bigger let's see his is uh valued at 11.4 million dollars 186 kilogram gold cube so that's almost six thousand ounces of gold so uh I, like if i made it similar size in silver oh we're only looking at like one in a 1.2 comex contracts <laughs> let's call it bank of america they've <laughs> allegedly been delivering some so anyway that's the news or the stuff that i looked at today uh Maybe I'll read about McCollum's eight point memo. I never remembered if it was eight or nine points, but that's the stuff that's going on. Uh, I'm not trying to be anti American or pro anything except uh, at least get honest facts about what's going on. And, you know, in the end, I think the silver price will have to go up at some point. Um, Surprise that it, it it has not yet. And uh, to people who are saying, well, how long can the manipulation go on? I guess it can go on for a while. I mean, you see all the tools that are being used against it. Um, it seems like it's coming to a head yet. Fortunately, uh, this is one of the times where the fact that I've based the things I do where, you know, sometimes I'll make an option bet, you know, and understand the risk, but I mean, let's say it took five more years and they were still stuffing the price every day. I would not think that would be the case, but, you know, still, like, what are you going to invest in U.S. treasuries or Tesla shares now? Uh, I mean, I think the forces, you know, Fed raises, how far are they going to raise before the stock market has to start melting down? And then what happens? So I get it, and it is tough to watch seeing... Uh, all the money that's being printed and stolen. But at least to me, in the end, that's why there, there's times where it's like, geez, how much longer do you have to sit here making videos explaining the silver market's manipulated? Although it's one of those things where I guess uh, there's ever going to be in America again or what we thought we had. Um, you know, I guess it's worth fighting for. I've chosen to do it from a different location, but um you know i guess that's at least how i felt i could do my part and would like to thank reina gold a partner of reina silver for doing their part in helping to bring us today's episode and uh, a lot of things that are going on um fun things planned uh hopefully we'll have an event in person soon where people could meet jorge talk with him uh dr peter mcgaw didn't happen in person last year but hopefully at silver fest three and Either case, with that said, I do hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. Thanks for being here. Hit the, hit the share button if you found this helpful and think other people would benefit from uh, being aware of what's going on. 
And with that said, have a good night and I will see you again soon.